So tonight I'm going to uh, talk about some principles on uh, pruning bonsai. And uh, then at the end of it, uh, we'll have a discussion. We're going to have a number of questions or people can uh, add information or questions which people would like to ask. So without pruning bonsais, as a tree, it will follow its natural course and lose any structure it has, small structure. In the care and development of bonsai, it's one of the essential activities which uh, help the development and health of, the, of a tree. It's not the only technique, but it's a technique which is, has to be used with, in combination with other techniques. Because the bonsai covers a number of different species uh, in different climatical conditions and micro uh, uh, ecological systems, depending on the country and the part of the country in the, in the garden, uh, it, it is quite a diverse topic. However, tonight I'll be concentrating on uh, deciduous trees. Those are trees which uh, um, lose their leaves generally uh, some of them are semi deciduous but they tend to lose, lose the leaves in the winter months and then they they're abundantly growing through the spring and summer uh, conifers and junipers and some other green, evergreen trees have the same approaches of the techniques uh, or principles which i'm going to discuss tonight um, the general principles remain the same One thing to bear in mind when pruning a tree and is to think of the different techniques you use to design and to uh, maintain a design in a tree. And one of the uh, faults often beginners make is, is to over prune. Uh, when, if you consider removing a, a branch or part of a branch, there might be other methods like wiring, which could save the branch at the same time uh, use it in the design or the com uh, of the tree so always think twice before cutting now why do we prune trees or bonsai trees in this case it's <coughs> to redirect the uh, the growth resources in the tree as it grows uh, pruning helps increase back budding in some species more than others. By pruning a tree in the right way, you could increase the ramification of the branch structures. And it's also then to develop the style of the tree you're uh, looking towards uh, constructing. In pruning, you're uh, allowing, allowing more light and air into the inner branches, which then uh, uh, helps the back budding stimulates it. Uh, another thing is uh, increases flowering. For example, like bougainvilleas, if you hard prune a bougainvillea or a rose bush, uh, you, you'll get a much better flowering than in the following year. Now, whether it's a, a result of the additional stress put on it and it's trying to reinstate itself in survival, I don't know, but it, it is a, a reaction of uh, heavy pruning. In, in bonsai uh, cultivation, we have specific tools which have been developed over the years, mainly from Japan, which are very specific to certain ways of cutting. You, you can see a, a number of the very commonly used tools. There's a scissors, there's a, a gin pliers, there's a, a, a cutter, there's a, a wire cutter, and there's a concave cutter. They come in various sizes, depending on the, uh, the application, but as starters, a good pair of bonsai scissors, which are extremely sharp, and uh, concave cutters, a wire cutter, and these are ba the basic tools which you would normally use. Now, here we have a, a little diagram of a, of a branch growing out. 
don't know if you can see the cursor, but at the top here, top of every branch or every tree, there's what we call a terminal bud with scales underneath it. Oh, it's come down now. <laughs> Whoops. If you look further, come down the branch, you'll see other buds or where leaves were, and there were some dormant uh, nodes there, we call them. The, the, these are potential areas where This is this one year's growth. In one year, depending on the species, some of them are very, grow very rapidly, and you can get quite an elongation with several of these uh, uh, nodes or internodes. If you look back further down, the, the previous year's growth is two years old. On this particular example, there's, there's just two nodes left. So this at one time had been growing similar to the top one and had been cut back to this, this area here, to just a, so that you've only got a small length there. And going back another year, so the two years, you've got the much thicker uh, section at the bottom. Now, when we prune a, a branch, what happens is that at the end of each tip, uh, in the growth pattern of most plants, you have what they call a, an apical dominant bud. Now, the end of the, of the tip has in it certain auxins which suppress the dormant buds further down on the branch and further down on the tree from <coughs> uh, being activated. The reason for this is because a tree is trying to reach out to the best and most efficient light source. So the ones at the top have dominance over the ones at the bottom. This is why you very often, if you look at nature, you see the lower branches in time die back and fall off because they get sh shielded from the sun and, and the growth hormones and the sugars are going to the ends of the branches. By cutting off the a typical bud, can you see the cursor here at the top, that would automatically stimulate new growth from the dormant buds. So you get a, a new fork here. So it's, instead of going up straight, it ramifies into two areas. In some, some plants you get even more than two, <coughs> but generally it's uh, two. They don't have, these are what they call uh, lat lateral nodes. But you've got some species where you have one here and then one there and then one here. So they come out, uh, uh, what do you call that now? Uh, not, not in the same, on the same position, but they come out one left, one right, one left, one right. You could also have cut, for example, this twiglet here and this twiglet here. That would increase the growth of these two here, but this is just a diagram and you, you don't want ramification with like uh, in, in this pattern normally. Here's a picture of one of my olives where you can see it's been cut here and you've got these two new growths coming on either side of it. Olive is one of these, one of the trees which has uh, lat lateral nodes and comes out and forks very easy, same as a pomegranate. You, you've got one coming out here. This was a cut here and it, uh, it's coming out here. Over here, further back down, this has been stimulated as well. There's a cut which was coming out straight here. Very often, they, they tend to want to go straight out. But the, the beauty of bonsai is to have uh, movement in the branches and in the primary and the secondary and the tertiary branches. So it, it doesn't look very nice if it's just coming out straight with just leaves on each side. So to create movement with a cut and grow method, which is basically what pruning is, um, you can change the direction by deciding which you, direction you'd like the new branch to grow in, and if necessary, cut off the other one. So you can cut it off and you just leave one uh, branch coming out, should you wish. 
<coughs> now, <clears throat> the position where you cut is, is, is quite important to um, uh, stimulate the, the growth, but also for, for the health of the tree. Here we've got a diorama on the left hand side, you can see a cut which is the, at the wrong angle and it's slightly above the, uh, the snow to this bud here, but it's slightly too high. This one is a cut a bit too high up, so this will look then eventually die back down here. This is a, a cut which is too close to the bud, so basically you've got some of the flow coming to the bud is going to be uh, hindered and, and it won't go uh, for the, the growth of the blood. And this large one here is the correct growth. I've uh, experienced that when I'm cutting, for example, olives uh, and a lot of most other trees, is I, I tend to leave it slightly more higher than this one, which is they're saying is correct. The main reason for that is that you'll always get some form of dieback on the, on the cut thing. Now, if it's too close to where you want the node is, then it might interfere with the stimulation of the uh, the phonemes and everything going feeding uh, and the xylems feeding the the node. You can always then trim this back later once this has developed a bit further. I prefer doing that because you're you're not uh, endangering the new shoot you're trying to stimulate. Now, when to prune a tree? Well, before I go into when, it's very important that to only prune trees and work on trees and on wire trees, which are healthy and vigorous. In, and the, the best way to, to do that is your health regime and the fertilization of the trees in the year previous to doing any heavy work on it. Now, when to prune depends on the species of the tree. However, as a general rule, when the tree is grown in the spring long enough to recuperate the stored energy it has in its root system, which is the, until the leaves are formed, we're talking deciduous trees here, until the leaves are formed to recuperate the energy, stored energy, which has been used to push out the new growth, so in other words, late in, late in the spring after and the leaves of new leaves are set out and from a, a very light green have hardened up and become a, a darker green. And then it's through photosynthesis, it's uh, re replenishing back to the roots, the energy it's using to put out the new growth. Well, that is the best time to, uh, uh, to do pruning. It's basically the end of spring and before the, the summer. Now, some trees are more ferocious in growth than others. So it's something you have to observe each tree independently and see when to do it. The exception is for pruning and especially for heavy pruning is uh, in the winter months before the onset of spring. Or in our case, we have the opportunity in the, the summer dormancy. So when trees are subjected to 35 degrees Celsius for more than just a couple of days, they tend to uh, slow down the growth pattern and reserve their energies. Uh, and some of them will even have a leaf drop um, to survive. Those are times when they're, they're not an active growth, but you can also prune during those periods. I mean, for a lot of deciduous trees, when they lose their leaves in the, in the winter, it's the ideal time to be able to um, look at them, examine them, and to to see the uh, growth changes which are interfering with the design or unwanted growth uh, in the branches uh, to do that in the, the winter uh, dormancy period. So when the spring, usually you need about four or five pairs of leaves that have hardened off to give you an indication of roughly how much you need to 
let the branches grow. <coughs> um, one of the faults I and most beginners have had at some time in their bonsai career is to over prune trees before they're ready for pruning. Uh, um, you have an idea of a shape and you, 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 you're you trying to keep that at too early stage in the bonsai's development. You, you'll see a lot of um, professionals, for example, with the uh, olive trees and myrtles, allowing the, once you've got a, the, reach the stage of a development, a developed size or, or um, type of tree, allowing the branches to grow out and no longer quite quite long, just like my, my hair has done recently with COVID. So that it's all over the place before pruning back. Because if you try constantly to try on a weekly, and sometimes even twice weekly basis, cutting out new shoots which are coming out because they're sitting, coming out of the silhouette, you're doing the tree no good because the tree is basically pumping out energy and you're depleting it, it's pumping out energy. You're basically, it's fighting a boxing match. It's got no, way of ever winning. When you have branches in the development of a tree, which you're, which we call sacrifice branches, those are branches which you purposely allow to elongate with the scope of increasing the girth of the trunk or the particularly prim primary branches on which they're coming off, then you should um, consider that and, and not prune those and allow it to reach the stage when you can do a massive pruning back. You can't, you can't just not stop pruning everything. everything. So do not continually prune a tree, but allow a free growth every couple of years to maintain health. This is even trees which are uh, in development or uh, almost reach the stage of development. It's good to Every so often, if it's not going in for a show or something, then to let it have a, like a free range chicken, let it do its own thing. This will benefit the long term health of the tree because when the health deteriorates, then it's going to be more susceptible to fungicides, to insect attacks, just to die back. So the health of a tree is the essential uh, mainstream of keeping an loving bonsai. Now, pruning has to do with restricting and maintaining the growth patterns. <coughs> that has to be taken into consideration with the fertilizing, fertilizing regime you're using and, and the type of watering you're using. <coughs> because <coughs> if you're trying to get your tree bigger or to grow thicker branches and you're pumping fertilizer in all the time and giving it more fertilizers, okay, you're stimulating the growth. But at the, at the same time, you're then pruning back and pruning back and giving more fertilizer. You're basically, what you're giving on one hand, you're taking away with the other. So you, there is a, a balance between the two and you have to um, learn it through experience with your own particular tree because even the same tree in a different pot, in a different garden, will react slightly different in, depending on who, who's managing it, how much water they're giving, the type of garden, the amount of uh, direct sunlight per day, etc. There, there's so many variables. So you will notice, for example, if, uh, uh, if you're over fertilizing and over watering and it's too abundant and it has, uh, the, the, the internodes become large, uh, the length between the internodes becomes longer anyway. So basically you're going, you've got a lot of growth, but you're going to have to cut that back because with a small tree, you want to have short internodes because then you can have a much more compact tree rather than a lengthy leggy tree. So by observing the pattern growth of each individual tree, this to see where the energy is going. That's another interesting thing is that you would have all noticed that <coughs> There's a tree when it's springs come and it's got the right more length of daylight uh, sunlight hours, 
the, the, it starts warming up, it starts growing better, and then you start giving fertilizer again. But you'll notice a tree never grows uniformly on every branch at the same rate. There are always dominant branches, uh, mainly in the apicule area of, of the tree, but it can be sucker shoots, it can be uh, side branches. For some reason or other, maybe it depends on the nutrition on that particular root feeding that particular branch, but some of them are grow more robustly than others. So you have to observe that pattern and see if the energy is going into a particular uh, leaf, or sorry, a particular uh, branch, which is not uh, ideal for your design, then it's a, worth considering cutting that branch so that the, the, the flow will be redirected to a, a higher or lower branch on the same vein, which will then uh, simulate the, the, uh, the sugars which were going to that one branch which was growing out of proportion with the other branches. <laughs> Another thing to consider is when you're pruning is, and we all have our doubts, should I or shouldn't I, is if in doubt, leave the op your options open for future development. So if you're not too certain about, shall I remove this or shan't I, then there's nothing wrong. And once you've removed it, that's the end of the story. But if in doubt, just leave it and then and, and see how the rest of the tree develops. It might become a more important branch because you might have to die back on another area. But it's something to worth considering that it, uh, at no point in time do you have a, a definite 100% clear image of what the tree is going to develop because the tree will decide what it decides itself. But, and you'll have to keep adjusting your, your uh, design according to the, the growth of the tree. So by keeping branches which are not, you know, border, borderline cases, I'd call them, that's worth keeping them. I think I mentioned uh, earlier about increasing the taper by eliminating too uh, strong growth in apical areas. So don't continually <clears throat> prune. With deciduous trees and, and also most bonsai, the, the, the impact of the tree is on, the, on, on the, the taper. So basically you need a strong uh, base at the noari, at the, where it touches the, the soil, the ground, and the trunk line, the main trunk line, if it's a single trunk tree, or, or has to be tapered. But then the primary branches coming off the trunk also have to be, the higher it goes up in the tree, uh, less, um, thick than the lower ones. That gives you a, a well-balanced visual impact of a, of a tree growing up with age. So if, you, if there's a, a lot of growth on the upper region of the tree, which is then increasing the, the girth of the, the branch in relationship to the other branches at the top of the tree, or the top part of the tree, then you should be more careful about pruning those so that they don't go out of proportion, get thicker than lower branches, which in principle should be thicker. So it's, it's a constant balancing act. When pruning, it's important to have a vision in advance of where you want the tree to be in several years time, because you can make a tree pretty for a day or a, or a week or a month, and give us a nice silhouette. But are you doing the tree justice long term? That's another thing to consider for yourself. Uh, as I said, it's, an, it's a very common fault of most of us have had at some time or others to over prune and develop trees before you've 
reached the desired trunk and main branch size. I mean, basically from a pre-bonsai stage, before you get to a refinement stage, in principle, it normally takes quite a few years. We're talking about seven years, eight years. Some are, you can achieve good results, for example, with olives in seven years, and some take even longer. But it, the principle is to develop the trunk, develop the main branches and the secondary branches. And the foliage, that, that will come back at some time or other. You, that's, that's not a problem. It's, it's the branch structures you should concentrate on the, for the first years of your uh, bonsai tree um, work. So, let the trees grow. Set out your future goal for the size and, and the style. I think several years ahead. And when in doubt, allow options. They can always be removed later. Study the growth patterns of various trees. We're talking deciduous again here. Don't forget that uh, uh, the less scarring you have on deciduous trees, the, the better it is. That, that's why some of the most prized deciduous bonsai are uh, trees grown from seed or from saplings, which through pruning, the cut and grow method, over the years uh, have developed. So, because when you prune a, a young tree, it heals like we all do when we are younger, quicker. Um, so this, the scarring is, is, is quickly uh, calloused over. And if pruned in the right way, so you don't have uh, large branches growing in the wrong place and then cutting them off too late, you have a small scar, which are very you know, you, The aesthetic of the tree is, is increased. And here are some samples of examples of pruning triangle. This is if you want to create a large crown. Everything outside the triangle is, is cut off. And these red bits at the bottom here, these lower branches, you're allowing them to grow out to achieve the triangle. This yellow bit at the top is where you have to carefully control the, the growth out of the silhouette. Here's another example of a, of a tree where you're trying to get a, a lower a crown, a broad crown. You see how all this was superfluous to the design? then the design will come within the triangle area. This is another design, which is more the, the, the triangle uh, a symmetry, where you want to, this is, you very often use with the, uh, a, lot, a lot of uh, uh, junipers, for example, Here we're going to other extremes where we're creating what they're almost like a sumo thing. So the person in principle, according to Stagram, has let the tree grow out, grow out way back and has cut back enormously back to the main trunk structure. As a result, theoretically, you have these new, um, on the, each side of the main trunk, these sucker branches coming out, which then they've allowed these to develop that in time will be proportionate to what's been cut off from the top. This is another example, another design, where you can see, I don't know if you can see it, it's very light. There's a branch, big branch here which has been cut off where these red uh, slashes are at the side. This branch has been cut off. There's another branch here being cut off, another one here, there's another one from here. In fact, <coughs> it's amazing with uh, wild olives, for example, when you have major cutback, how ferocious the, the growth responds. So a lot of people are frightened of cutting off too much, but <coughs> if you've got a healthy tree and it's the right species, 
because you never do this to a juniper, for example, because a juniper relies on a, a slightly different function and you've got to be a bit more careful of the foot, removing the foliage on a juniper. But with it, most deciduous trees, they do respond uh, in growth patterns, uh, depending on the pruning. This is an, another example. So see how much of the, the original crown, this was a nice uh, sort of dome-shaped uh, bush-style tree. And in this case, they decided to remove all that to have, to have a, a much more uh, wouldn't say active, a, more, a, a much more moving style with a much lower apex. This is another case here. Here, um, the branch structure of a tree has a, a root system which is relates to it. Some people say it actually mirrors it. So if you're going to do major branch pruning, you have to bear in mind uh, compatible root pruning at the same time. At a, at the repotting stage, this is a good thing to do uh, when you're re going to repot a, a tree, but you also want to design change the uh, the design of the tree. What they've done here is they've cut these these roots here, which were feeding basically. You'd have to see the life frame, but in th in in theory, they were feeding this part of the tree at the top. By removing some of them, they're going to have less growth here. So the roots here on the other side would, would take up the the flow. Here's another major branch chain. Can you see the silhouette here? Very light to color. They decided they don't want a tree like that. They want to have a slanting tree here, an informal upright. It was on the chat not too long ago about sumos. Sumos are quite interesting little trees. But in principle, what they do is they let out like a fuel grown tree grow, just grow. So you get the girth of the trunk. And then it's cut down here after several years. And so you get a couple of new uh, branches coming out, which are then after another couple of years are then cut off and then they start the ramification. So it's, it's, it is a, a lengthy process, but you can achieve quite a, a nice show in tree by um, allowing extended growth and then having drastic pruning or cutting back. Two nice, two nice little looking trees. <coughs> now, when designing a tree, the, one of the first principles you do is to uh, try and find what you think is the, the front of the tree. The, the front is the, 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 the part where it's visually most appeasing, pleasing, sorry. But very often to do that, if there's a lot of confusion of trunk branches and twigs and, and leaves and things, the, the, the known practice is to, to clean up the tree first of the um, unnecessary, definitely, obviously unnecessary uh, clutter so that you have a better view of the tree. <coughs> now here we have about 15 examples of what's normally considered not necessary for a tree. You're starting at the bottom here, lots of trees here have what they call the sucker growths from the branch of the thing. Now these things can be easily pruned off because they're going to do no good, unless in some cases like um, pomegranate, for example, it does help when they callous, when you cut them and they callous over, it increases the, the, the girth of the trunk, but in principle, they're not required. Then you've got number two here, which is in the center of the trunk. That's in, in the eye line that, that is distracting from the, the view of the trunk line up. So they're not necessary. They can be elim eliminated. And you have these very often very weak, uh, superfluous little branches, which are, as you hear, we have nice, quite a nice dominant lower branch here. So if you've got a, a nice thicker dominant branch, these things 
detract from the attention from the, the main uh, directional branch. So they're not necessary, so they can come off as well. And then we have branches which are hanging down, for example, which are in contrast to the natural growing up of branches. They're not necessary, as are uh, ones growing up, number nine. Well, I'll come to that in a minute. However, I do want to point out that <coughs> if you're a beginner and you see a branch going down or going up, you think, oh, well, that's not necessary, I'll cut it off. But be careful. That's one of the things where you could leave until you meet up with uh, a few of us who've got a bit more experience. Because very often these branches can be wired to to move if they're not come, if they're coming up but not exactly in the wrong right in the wrong place, they can be wired to uh, become part of the design. So they're not necessary. You can you can get them to come back down again or go sideways or come slightly up. So it depends on each particular tree, but the, 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 you can rectify it without pruning it. So that's one of the things where you could like wait on a bit. Then you've got dead branches. Dead branches can come off dead twigs, especially now, for example, like the Chinese elms. I've got one I'm going to show you in a minute. You have uh, on the twigs, you get a certain amount of dieback, so they're not necessary, so you can cut them off. Um, on deciduous trees, it's, 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 uh, it's not like uh, conifers or pines. Uh, dead branches on uh, conifers and pines, they can form an interesting part of the design by becoming a, um, a gin. In other words, uh, an old branch which has died off, but just still remaining there to give a, a sense of age. But uh, deciduous trees are normally much soft wood, not so hard. And um, in general, you can remove them. Uh, olives, with old, well, also maybe, maybe an exception because they, they have some very nice dead wood on uh, old olives, which can be retain, retained. You got then number six crossing branches. We got one branches here crossing over another more major branch that optically is confusing, so they can come off. Then you've got number seven here. You've got a branch which is coming back towards the trunk line rather than going out like the others. That's another one which can come off. But there's another one which also could be drained down, for example, to come alongside this one here. That you have to see on a uh, item by item basis. Uh, Upgrowing branches internally here. This number eight doesn't look very nice. In fact, all the, the gray ones here, um, according to this diagram, are, are superfluous. And uh, branches with funny turns like this one here, number nine, or parallel growing branches. Where are they? Ten. Over here. See, you've got two branches which are both competing for the same space here. That's not pleasing and, and it's not to uh, aim for in bonsai. So you'd have to remove one of them. You have to decide yourself which one. Probably most likely would be the one in between the two because the space, the spacing would be better then. You do sometimes, some trees get suckers higher up in the branch like you do at the bottom of the tree. Uh, you find that very often with, um, with junipers as well. You get some interior suckers. And some of them are weak and they'll never, as much as you want them to, they'll never become a strong branch. So you can remove those as well. Another uh, item to look out for when cleaning up a tree is uh, um, branches growing from the same height on the trunk, what we call um, uh, uh, crowbar, crossbar. This one here, above number 10 and number 13, they're all. They're coming out from the same height in the trunk, but from the opposite sides. That's also um, not a desired growth pattern in a bonsai. And then branches which compete with the trunk line, as you get to the apex of the tree, <coughs> has become increasingly refined. And to make sure that there's no competition for branches trying to compete with the height of the apex 
or uh, in the thickness uh, or the taper of the apex. That's something the disproportionately thick branches at the top are something to be uh, looked out for when pruning. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and stop the share and then show you a little tree I've got here with me and show you on a real tree. I hope you can see it properly. So you, you'd probably have to put your screens on viewer, viewer screen so that it's a bit big. Now this is a Chinese elm. Yeah. It's lost all its leaves. <coughs> it's quite wet because it's been out in the rain. Yeah, that's the front. Now this time, this time of the year, when it's lost its leaves, it's still got a, a few leaves left on it. You can see the ramification and, and, and the twigging quite quite well. And this is a, a good time to work on on the pruning back the last year's unrequired or not necessary growth. So you've got for larger branches, there aren't any large real large branches on this. You can use something like this, uh, uh, a concave or a, a pliers, but most likely just the uh, uh, scissors would be probably sufficient. <clears throat> I don't know whether you can see it. I mean, there's a branch sticking out here with this tree. This, that's far too long and out of the way. So just put my glasses on. There's been a studio, I think, Mark, for this. Now there's a note just here. I'm gonna, this is coming off. That was going up. That was one of the two upright ones. Now the apex here, it's getting quite long, and this is, has to remain a showing. But it's got a nice taper. But this will start. If I allow this to carry on growing, this is going to get thicker, and I'm going to lose that taper. So I've got a few small side shoots coming out here. So what I've decided to do. is to cut this back and just allow those two other tapers. See that? So they're going to be, this is the, was the dominant growth areas. So I'm going to get some things coming out of there. So what I have to do now is to bring it up to the same level. This one here and this one here they have to be cut off. Now, as I'm cutting it, you won't be able to see it there, but the notes on the Chinese elm come out one one side and one the other side, one one side and one the other side. So it, by going back to which node I'm going to cut it, I'm giving the direction to what the new one, when it starts growing in the spring, is going to come out with. There's another one here. Another one there. There's another long one coming out here. I don't know whether you can see it. When it's got to this, this sort of stage of development, it's always best to go back and just leave maybe two, maybe three nodes back when you're cutting it back because I don't want it getting any longer anymore. What I'd like is this branch to grow this bottom branch here, I like this to thicken up more. I like this to thicken up more. This is already a bit too long, but I'm still thinking about it. So I'm not going to do any pruning on these, this one here or this one here. But I've got to be careful on the, on the top now so that these will get thicker and then I can cut them back. I want them roughly the same size or going back a little bit. But in order to do that, I've got to let it grow out a bit and then to cut back. There's one here which is a bit, um, I haven't decided what to do with this one here. Because it's competing a bit with this one here, which then again, this one here looks a bit thick as well. 
So it's it's just a, con a continuous puzzle. And then what I like is not necessarily what you like. So we all have our individual tastes and there isn't a hundred percent right way or wrong way or right style or wrong style. It's, as I say, one man's meat is another man's poison. So it's, there are techniques, there are rules and techniques, but the end result is what you want from it and not what a textbook says it has to look like. But the, if you learn the principles, then you can develop your own techniques. Try and make it bigger here. But basically, this is a top view of of a tree and then you can see how by cutting off the the straight bit in the middle you'll get the ramification as seen on the other side of the diagram where the the basic principle in pruning is once you've got the primary branch these are going to these are developing secondary branches and then from the secondary branch you get tertiary branches and then then you, you 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 from one you're going to two and from two to four and from four to eight and, and ad infinitum which which you don't go because then i've never seen a i've seen very few trees with it, such ramification that it's uh, looks like a i don't know a wire brush <laughs> but th that's basically the, uh, the the print one of the principles of also pruning uh, to, to to develop the ramification so to end it uh, for large cuts, it's best using a, a, a large concave cutter. Uh, there are other, apart from concave, but there are other cutters which you can do at an angle uh, that will help the, the, the healing of the wound and the callousing over. Um, for large cuts, I'd always recommend using a, a cutting paste, a wound cutting paste. Uh, that helps, that helps uh, prevent uh, uh, pathogens entering the, the wound and, and healing better. With small cuts you can use scissors and most of all when when cutting because the your tools should be sterile and they should be very sharp so watch your fingers when cutting. So that's the end of the presentation so I like